the statistical likelihood of this failing and that being uh, roughly never is probably my favorite part about this deck honestly because it just makes me smile and i'm pretty sure we're gonna hit the last one right yeah we have a one in a one in 11 chance to not hit it in 10 attempts so this is probably a pretty safe bet so let's do this did we not hit it no we did hit it good Oh, look at that. I mean, we are the Balaz deck now, does it, don't you think? Hmm. You know, mistakes were actually kind of slightly made here, not gonna lie. Because, um... It's here. My last skull out of the throw is, uh, here, yeah. Um, how's it going, boys? And 3.5%. Today, I am proud to present to you my best reanimator deck so far. And this is a work of art. It's statistically perfect and it allows us to have a turn 3 win condition, which is extremely rare, if completely impossible for almost any other type of reanimator deck. And, well, it's great, what can I say? We are going to be using Squirming Emergence. And the idea with that is simple. We mill 3 or 4 cards with these cards on turn 1, Turn 2, we glimpse the unthinkable on ourselves, and then, chances are, considering statistics, we have 20 creatures and 22 lands, from those 13 to 14 mil cards, we will have 4 per- not 4, but 7 permanents in the graveyard, which means we cast this for a skull out of the lost trove. And then we win through Rise of the Dark Realm. That's right, we're not just reanimating our things. We're also reanimating everyone's things, because why not at this point? And then we just OTK with the Grey Merchant. Beautiful. And considering we are using creatures mainly to actually mill ourselves, this gives us a layer of protection against, well, anything that's creature-based, honestly, that doesn't just flood the board and win through Trample. So... That's another uh, good part of the win condition because, well, if you're playing self-mill reanimation, you know on turn 5 there's almost no way that you do not get at least a single combo to win the game in the graveyard, which makes this extremely versatile. Turn 3 win potential, extreme versatility, and, well, typically on turn 4 it's going to be pretty easy to just cast and burial rights for the flashback cost and, well, win through that. Yes. It's just that good, is it? Oh yeah, it is beautiful, what can I say? 22 lands to be specific, 3.9 average mana cost, and that being said, without any further ado, let's just get a crack in and see what happens. Going first with 3 lands, 2 stitches suppliers, and glimpse the future. Now this is what I call a pretty decent hand, honestly. So let's start off with the stitches supplier and see what we get. Okay, okay, that's a mill. Didn't want to mill this, but considering we're glimpsing turn 2, I think this is going to be pretty decent. We have a good shot at winning already. And, honestly, I can just cast this for blue and not even damage myself. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Okay, and by the way, the combo has been officially got, boys. I saw it. Yes, a skull out of the trove, and here we go. Breach the multiverse. Oh, it's gonna be easy. It's gonna be... It's gonna be so delicious. What else can I say, honestly, about this? Okay, I'm not gonna attack with the Stitch of Supplies because there's no need. Hmm, mill that. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And let's just uh, drop this and tap it. And let's attack with what? Maybe he protects. Who honestly knows at the end of the day? Didn't. And remember, Stitch of Supply comes on the field, mills three cards. Goes off the field, still mills a little bit. So yeah, at this point, statistically, it is completely impossible for us to cast on burial rights and not instantaneously destroy infinity. Ah, what a beautiful combo. So let us just go. Let's see what we get here. And ta-da. And let's do this. Actually, I could have technically... Well, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. Let's see what we get good from him. I have no absolute idea. There we go. Another scholar uh, and uh, might as well take this. I don't even know what it does, but you know, I think it's gonna be absolutely cheeky. So you know, I'm gonna do it anyway. 
Another breach to multiverse because why not? <laughs> 14 cards left, baby boo. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. And now let's take a Jujutsu Naturalist because again, why not? We're gonna take everything at the end of the day anyway. So it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. Four cards left. Ah, also, by the way, this is now 2020, so uh, have fun with that one. And let's do the last skull out of the trove. And ooh, look at that, a Catilda. That's mine now. <laughs> Man, this is this is just peak everything. And now, Rise of the Dark Realm. Well, actually, do we win? Yeah, we definitely still win. You know why I was asking that question? Because Grey Merchants, okay? Two Grey Merchants in hand, that's kind of a little... Huh? So yeah, that pretty much uh, never happens. But, but, since I know all of you are gonna have a really fun time because of that in the comment section, I instantaneously added two charts, uh, chart a course. Because, well, you know, then we can discard. But again, typically that will never happen. Ooh, look at this. An interesting card. And there we go. Chart the course. Speak of the devil, as they say. In any case, let us glimpse the unthinkable because that's the better choice. So, what did we mill? Well, it's going to be pretty easy to get our combo pieces with Skull out of the Trove now because we have three of them. And as you can see, squirming emergence. Very squirmy. So, let's see. How do we want to do this? Oof. This vampire, huh? Well, very interesting, one might say. In any case, let's do this and do it on ourselves. What did we, did, what did we hit? An unburial, right, say? I kind of like that. I kind of like that. And now we can just discard the skull out of the trove and instantaneously win. Again, consistency is the name. And magics. Sadly, not the game for consistency, honestly, oh, but it's pretty consistent considering, well, everything. And this guy should wear a shirt. Yes, this guy should definitely wear a shirt. In any case, I like this card, honestly, kind of. Whenever a vampire or another creature is, uh, is destroyed... Wait, no, what? Yeah, when, okay, when it dies, good. For a moment there, I was thinking, wait a minute, did I, did I miss something? No. In any case, we got it. Well, we got one more of these in the hand, but I don't think that's a big issue. So, let's drop it like this, and let's drop this as black. We already have green, so, you know, it's all fine and dandy. And let's drop this, because he's gonna attack, obviously, so, you know, it's that. Ooh! Everything is according to plan. And the pl Wait, did I actually lose last game because I had a card that probably draws cards from the enemy? Was it that card that I said I don't know what it does? A forecast green card with constellation effects. Did I actually maybe lose because of that? I'm not even sure, dude. In any case, attack me, see what happens. Oh yeah, you think you're the vampire deck, my baby? I am the true vampire thick and there's nothing you can do about it. And considering this guy's playing black, obviously uh, the devotion to black is going to be pretty big here. And we like that. Oh yeah, we like that. Again, statistically, it is absolutely improbable at this point for us to lose because reasons. <laughs> oh. It is what it is, boys. And it's pretty good. It's pretty funny. Ooh, another one. But, obvious things are obvious, unburial rights it is. A scholar of the trove. There are also ways to make this pretty consistent on turn 4 with red, but that's what we did last time, I think. Again, I am all for that sweet, sweet uh, sauce of making uh, reanimation decks consistent. My, one of my favorite things in this game is, by the way, reanimation. Because it's always so nice. Wait a minute, did I see a Wandering Throne? Yes, I did. Hoo -hoo! Okay, okay, uh, Wandering Throne, guess what you get? Uh, Sphinx. Let's go, baby. Double Sphinx Prox. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's as beautiful as you think it is. So, first of all, let's go first. Actually, do I even care about anything here? 
I just reanimate the Sphinx uh, two times, right? And let's see, what do we want to get? Ooh, okay, okay. Oh, actually, why not? Why not? And let's see, what do we want here? Um, That's the second proc, right? Yes, that is the second proc, so it's just gonna be another one. In any case, and this now happens... I think I missed it up. Wait, did I miss it up? Eight cards left. Doesn't even matter. Da does not even matter. Uh, let's pick zombie this time. So the zombie effect uh, happens two times. And now, look at this. It's truly what you call beautiful. And I guess none of this honestly matters at this point. Holy moly, that's like 50... Woof! This is more counters than I expect, Br boys. We popping off like there's no tomorrow. We are popping off like there's absolutely no tomorrow. Look at this. Oh yeah, we're gonna mill him and completely destroy everything he loves. What a time to be alive. What a great time to be alive. Oh, we have her, so she steals stuff from him. That's cute, I guess. Not completely necessary, but... <laughs> nice. How much damage was that even? Was it 160 or 200 damage? Because we had the Vulcan throne. And it made the zombies deal double. And we stole one of his... Uh, what's it called? A bat? Also, yeah, it seems like this is the play. Double stitches supplies. Let's go, baby. And a pretty good chance at this. Look at that. Three cards instantaneously. Maybe we get lucky and actually, you know, cast this on turn three. Elves. Okay. Hmm. I mean, there's potential. There's potential in a lot of things, usually. So let's do this and hope for the best. We just need one land and... 11. Woof, that's big. Okay, okay. Rise of the Dark Realm. Very interesting. Rise of the Dark Realm into a glimpse. Okay, at points like this, I honestly probably should learn how, you know, things in magic technically kind of happen. Uh, but I think it's fine. Since we went first, uh, that means big skill is, you know, on our side. So it is what it is. Let's ditch the Grey Merchant instantaneously. Drop the tome, pay the life, and let's get ready to for business, boys. Again, consistency is key. And man, we got a lot of that consistency, let me tell you about, uh, about it. And we're gonna have two Grey Merchant procs. We're gonna have this, it's pretty big. Well, not that it constantly matters. We nah, it's not a weak start, he can do some stuff here. If he drops another, okay, he doesn't? Oh, Collective Company. Weak. Weak. Well, actually, I didn't even use Collective Company in my elf build. Seemed a little bit unnecessary, considering I never got ratted, so, you know, it is what it is. In any case, hopefully, we have not hit any, uh, any Realm Breakers. So, you know, it is what it is, but at the same time, let's see how, uh, how much we can actually accomplish here. Okay, so, first things first, do this. Do we actually win this one, though? Oh, we have the rise of the... Hmm. I think this is our choice? What is it? Well, it's gonna be some damage, but I don't think it's enough damage. We have three. Would that be enough? Oh, yeah, it's enough. Oh, yeah, we have three plus these. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely majestic and beautiful. So, what are we gonna get now? More? Oh, I actually did it in the wrong order. Oh, no. I could have actually done a little bit more, but I, I guess, honestly, that's fine. I did it in the wrong order. I could have milled myself. Uh, I could have Rise of the Dark Realm first and milled later, but it doesn't matter, honestly. Oh, wow, well, look at this hand. There's potential here, but there's also a potential for disaster, so I'm gonna mulligan. Okay, now this just looks a lot better. Okay, keep and ditch the merchant. Also, man, my best decision in life has been purchasing these alternative arts. Absolutely best choice ever. Didn't buy all of them because half of them are shit. Wizards. 
But in any case... Ooh, do you think this is uh, lane destruction? Could honestly be. Huh? Oh, oh, I, I needed to do... It's smart, smart, smarter. Well, doesn't really matter. I think this is land destruction. Could easily be, right? Uh, did we just get everything? No, because of our arrogance, this is in our hand. Oh, we can't add... Well... Six. Oh, wild... Oh, he's wildfire drawing. Okay. Uh, Giga Chad, I guess? This was a sorcery, right? Yeah, it was sorcery. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we're probably gonna hit it big with this anyway, so not no reason to threat. And we did not hit anything, huh? Oh no, we did, we did. Relax, boys, I completely got this. I got I got this, okay? Relax, relax, boys. I got this. Oh yeah. Man, imagine how strong this is when you're, you know, not randomly doing things. And he's still targeting himself. I don't even know what this guy's playing. I'm pretty sure it's not counter spells, but you know, it's like I have questions. Another wildfire, eh? Well, with one man, you're not gonna do too much here. So, arrivederci. Let's use the squirming emergence, by the way, here because I feel like it. We have it in the hand, so you know, might as well, might as well, and let's go. Let's see what he actually has here because. Seems a little bit sus, not gonna lie. Oh, a Shreldred and a Balas. Now, ain't that the cutest thing I have ever seen in my life? Okay, so now let's see what we get. Ah, uh, yes, another breach. Obvious, obvious things are obvious. The statistical likelihood of this failing, and that being uh, roughly never, is probably my favorite part about this deck, honestly. Because it just makes me smile. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna hit the last one, right? Yeah, we have a 1 in a one in 11 chance to not hit it in 10 attempts. So, this is probably a pretty safe bet. So, let's do this. Did we not hit it? No, we did hit it. Good. Oh, look at that. I mean, we are the Balaz deck now, Does it, don't you think? Hmm. You know, mistakes were actually kind of slightly made here, not gonna lie. Because, um, uh, yeah. Uh. It's here. My last skull out of the throw is, uh, here, yeah. Um, well, thankfully we have this. And actually we have enough mana to, uh, survive this. Target opponent exiles, deals 7 damage. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I think this is gonna be fine. Admittedly, I don't think it makes too much of a dif difference, but it's fine. What did he even exile? A ring, ring, eh? Okay, well, let's just do it like this. <laughs> the ultimate evil. It's beautiful, isn't it? So now he has two, uh, three cards left, and he just, you know, does that. I think we're absolutely fine, obviously, because of reasons. And I can just drop this as a hot cast and... That's bad. No, wait, it's... No, wait, it's not bad. False alarm, boys. False alarm. It never ends. Oh, yes. And now I just cast the Rise of the Dark Realm because, you know... Ta-da! And now a lot of damage will be dealt to our opponent because of reasons. Oh, yes. Oh yes, beautiful reasons. And let me mill him again a little bit because I, I just I just kind of feel like it, you know what I'm saying? And something's bugging out, I think. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, wizards. Perfection at its finest. Absolute perfection at its finest, as one might say. Discard the card, see what happens. You tried so hard and got so far, and in the end... Also, I will just remind everyone once again that I was right. Because as you can see, even though we have, well, we have two cards to discard uh, the, the, gray, uh, the gray merchants, 
we still always get our opponents down. Oh, that was an interesting mill right there. Okay, okay. And why? Because, well, again, consistency. Statistics is on our side. And this is what makes it even better. He was contemplating, does he blast the Stitches Supplier? Which, oh, wait, no, he's black. Huh. Oh, he does blast the Stitches Supplier. Very cute, very cute, Monami. Hoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> Okay, okay. I, I, I'm feeling ya. I'm feeling ya. So let us play this as white. I think that's gonna be good enough. And I'm probably gonna get exactly... Hmm, didn't get exactly what I wanted, but close enough. Seven cards in the graveyard. Can reanimate a couple of things. Ooh, a Pyrexian Arena. Watch out, boys. We have an absolute badass here. <laughs> in any case... Let's glimpse the unthinkable on ourselves and find... We did find it, right? Yeah, we, we did find this and we already have a breach. Which means... Oh, this guy's playing like 70 cards or... Hello. Are you gonna help me? Oh, that's so nice! Yeah. You know what's my favorite part about reanimation? There's a lot of people who actually unironically play uh, stuff like that. This card in Historic. It's pretty popular, believe it or not. And, well, let me tell you something. When you're point... Uh, when you're goalless to discard things, and your opponent is also discarding things for you, uh, that's that's called not problematic. Opponent's Graveyard. Mm, let's start with the Shreldred. I, I, I feel generous. Let's start off with just the Shreldred here. And, huh? Wait, what? We did not... Okay, well, in that case, well, let's just, let's just finish it, baby. There you go. Beautiful. Absolutely. Wait a minute. Um. Oh, and he concedes. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Have we lost only one out of five games also? I'm not sure I'm not counting, but this is a mulligan, and this looks like sus. But it could work. Uh, breach away? No, actually... Grey Merchant away. No, 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 no. Breach away, breach away. Okay, should be good. Hmm, decent lands. Let's see what our opponent does. Stuff. Okay, we got we got the solution for the Grey Merchant. I like it, I like it. Hmm, a reasonably mediocre lackluster mill right there. Not gonna do much with the squirmy boy, but, you know, it is what it is. Let us now do this again and see what happens. Does he have counter spells, you think? Because again, we, we have too much of a win rate currently. So, you know, I'm kind of worried about us. Hello? Is this one is this one more of those idiot things? Huh. I really should probably make a counter spell deck because man, I love counter spells. They're so fun. They are they are absolutely the most fun ever. And he no longer has any t uh, sort of reanimation. Well, not reanimation, but he doesn't doesn't look like our opponent has any more counter spells. Strange, strange boys. Report in. In any case, let's put the cat on purple and see what happens. I would be thrilled to leave it as a one uh, one six. Ah uh, yes, let's see it. He's gonna counter spell this. He's in a position where he must counter spell this no matter what. Yeah. Okay, and he draws us a card. Wow, Giga Chad. And then we just put him in a position where he must do it again? Okay, okay, that's that's pretty big, not gonna lie. Five. Can't actually cast this just yet. And we need to hit a land at this point. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be hard, honestly, to hit a land with this, but, you know, still. Okay. No counter spells, huh? Giga Chad. Uh, a little bit more. Now we can reanimate with this. I guess we just... Oh, I can't. Oof. Okay, in that case, let me do this. I mean, why not? We can. Our alternate... Ooh, approach of the second sun. Yeah, this is... This is definitely what my mom told me about. I'm, I'm assuming these are the people who sell candy from vans. Which is ridiculous. Why would you sell candy from a van? It seems... So unnecessary, honestly. But in any case, this also looks like a guy who could farewell us. 
and he's using stern scalding. Remen remember when Gal Gandalf the Yellow uh, hit Pippin on the head with a badger mole hammer? Those were the days, my friends. Also, we're not getting the land. Again, sus. Big sus. He just lets it happen, huh? Okay, let's see what the hell this works. Can we get a skull, a skull lot out? I mean, there's no world where he doesn't counterspell this, right? Also, has anyone ever paid attention to the... Descent animation? I think it's ass. But, you know, that's just one man's opinion. A lot of Vodka Mage's charms, huh? Very interesting. We kind of need just the land. Because at some point he's going to be forced to address what's happening on the board. And man, we are uh, we are really not getting those uh, lands, huh? Kind of bad, kind of bad. Yeah, not going to lie, kind of bad. Okay, um, oh, he's planning to Vrat, I assume? Because, yeah, this is a 5-5. He just can't let this slide forever, right? Single target removal? Repel. What a time to be a time. Yeah, this doesn't look like a win, but there is a chance. His name is also Blizzard Wolf, which is hilarious. In any case... Hello. Did I just told... Wait, this is the wrong land. What am I supposed to do with this? I need a white land at this point. Also, I should probably mill him at this point also, you know, just, just, just FYI. But we need to gain a... Okay, so the funny part is we can mill our opponents in this case, which is hilarious, honestly. And then we can threaten them with creatures. So technically, if we're playing against a counterspell enthusiast, uh, well, at the end of the day, we are kind of good at pressuring, even if we can't combo. Just because our spells are so versatile, technically. Approach of the second sun. That's not. Ooh. It's over. Oh man, it was it it was never even a battle. Honestly, I knew it. Beautiful. 